What are the emerald eyes? I should have probably told you about this a long time ago, but it's low priority. The sun is actually green. We don't see it. thorns, etc. proposes that our solar system is in a 24,000 year binary orbit with Sirius, and we return there in 8,000 years. But I wonder if there is really any evidence to that effect. What follows are Freemason secrets concerning the dog star Sirius. The ancient Egyptians believed the star Sirius was a gateway to the gods. They understood perfectly that our sun was in a binary orbit around this star. They observed Sirius and awaited for a specific celestial configuration that they believed opened a gateway to heaven. This would take place during the dog days of summer and observed in Lower Egypt during the helical rising of Sirius in the hottest years. Sirius would arise with our sun falling directly behind it, creating a solar eclipse of the two stars. This disappearance of Sirius behind the sun was believed to open a portal to the abode of the gods. It was during this unique occultation that pharaohs were interred in sarcophagi after special rites and embalming had occurred. The Giza Plateau, and specifically the Great Pyramid, are aligned specifically to observe the helical rising of Sirius so that its light shines deep within the pyramid into the king's chamber on specific dates. This configuration or rather eclipse of Sirius behind the sun was called the black sun. In Egyptian mythos it is known as the epiphany of Isis. Sirius in Egyptian mythos is female in gender. While in most all other civilizations our sun is male. The co-joining of these two stars in Eclipse was thought to bring either divine calamity or divine prosperity by the gods. Egyptian priests were able to calculate when times of great harvest and plenty or perilous drought and famine would occur. Not to mention the appearance of the priests as gods to the serfs through their accurate predictions of natural calamities and celestial phenomena. The ancient Egyptians considered Sirius within their mythology of the goddess Isis as being the birthplace of all creation. It is also in their mythology the destination of mankind's destruction an ultimate end. The star Sirius is the star of Bethlehem in the Bible, also called Sihor in Hebrew in the Old Testament, called Sopdet by the ancient Greeks which meant triangle. Sirius is the blazing star that is beheld in all Freemasonic lodges and venerated as the greatest of all lights.
The rays of Sirius are the rays of the glory behind the capstone on the one dollar bill. Every 24 to 28,000 years, our solar sun orbits the star Sirius and reaches a perihelion of approximately one to two astronomical units. This configuration spells total destruction astronomically as the pull of the giant Sirius against our measly sun will surely rip the planetary bodies out of their orbits and plunge the solar system into worlds in collision. It is when the sun reaches perihelion with Sirius in binary procession that the mythic epa of the golden age begins. It is also the anticlimactic beginning of creation in the Old Testament. It's this star that fell when referring to Satan or Lucifer of the Bible as Sirius falls in an ecliptic plane with Orion's belt during the winter months. The star Sirius is what led the three Magi, or rather the three belt stars of Orion, to Bethlehem. It is when the star Sirius becomes a dark star in eclipse with the sun that pharaohs were said to travel on their solar boats to the afterworld.
the most secret, feared, revered, observed object by the ancients, was called by the adepts and high-level initiates of the mysteries, the Black Sun. Known as the sun behind the sun, the knowledge of this celestial object was high-level secret science to the elite, and low-level mythos and fairy tales for the serfs and common people, contained in books of theos and mythos. Only those initiated into the secret science, understood and knew the symbols and stories in their books, and said knowledge was guarded carefully. The ancients believed there were two suns, a white sun, our solar sun, and a black invisible sun, at least to the serfs and those kept in ignorance. This black sun, was noticed by the ancient adepts, to move in such a way with our solar sun, as to act as a ghost, moving in the exact same course and path, as our solar sun. They also noticed at certain periods in a cycle, this star, would be hidden behind our sun, and it was in this conjunction they believed either life and generation would miraculously appear, or death and destruction as divine providence. To the ancient primal Egyptians, this black sun was believed to be a doorway or gateway to heaven and the gods. This star rises before our solar sun every year helically, beginning on July 4th. For 70 days prior, this star is hidden behind our sun and the ancient Egyptians would not bury their dead believing the gateway to heaven and the gods, closed. The helical rising of this black sun, brought on what was called, the dog days of summer, the hottest time of the year. To the Egyptians, it marked the time of the inundation of the Nile, causing the parched desert to bloom bringing forth life. But depending upon the cycle of this black sun, it would also bring on drought, plague, pestilence, and death to the inhabitants of Upper and Lower Egypt. The ancient Egyptians believed this unique conjunction between these two suns, acted as a portal and doorway of divinity. Understanding the motion and cycle of this black sun with our solar sun, also bestowed a unique ability and advantage over one's enemies, that could be used against them strategically in combat. This most sacred and secret star in ancient mythos, is called the Universal Father, the Great Architect, the Divine Son, Heaven, and the Gateway to the Gods. The ancient historian Plutarch called it, Prutz, the Leader. To the Egyptians, it was named Sokdet, and Anu. To the Greeks, Syrios. To the Persians, Tyre. To the Semitic Canaanites, Hazel. To the Hebrews it was called, Sihor to the ancient Sumerians, Orn. In Vedic titles, it is called Kionastron, and Mragevyada. To the Romans, it was called Sirius. To the ancient Celts, it was Sir. As gods, the Black Sun was called Isis and Anubis to the ancient Egyptians. Sophus, to the Greeks. Halel, to the Hebrews. Lucifer, to the Latins. In Syro-Arabic, it was called Matsarath. In Arabic, it is called Al-Shira. To the Babylonians, Ishtar. The Phoenicians, Astarte. Other titles are the Blazing Star, Scorcher, the Morning Star, the Bright, the Evening Star, the Mighty One, the Holy One, the Torch of Loki, the Star of Shiva, the Arrow, the Star of the East, the Ruddy One the Dog Star, the Third Eye, Pineal, Mother Mary, Diana, Guardian of the Gate, Wonderful, He Who Holds the Seven Stars, the Conspicuous One, the Queen of Heaven, the Mother Goddess. The Star Sirius was the prime focus of architecture in Egypt. Most all important and sacred structures at Giza, at Luxor, at Karnak, all along the entire Nile, were built in azimuthal alignment with the Dog Star. Entrances, shafts, the geometry general, is aligned in such a way, as to allow the light of the Dog Star Sirius to enter these structures for initiations and sacred rituals. In Turkey, the ancient temple of Gobleki Tepe, is also aligned with the Star Sirius, and bears pictographs throughout its wall structures 
depicting this dark star, of ancient awe and wonder. The sacred knowledge, and the core secret behind the dark star, was procession. The ancient Egyptians chronicled a close encounter with the black dog star, 14,000 years ago, that became embedded within the myth-making fabric, of most all ancient civilizations. In the Old Testament of the Bible, it's known, and called the Gene of Isis. The ancient seers and astronomer priests, understood by pure astronomical science, that our solar sun was bound and connected to the star Sirius, that the two celestial objects, were attached in a binary orbit around each other, and that at times within this cycle, cataclysmic events have occurred in the past, involving the convergence of these celestial bodies, and will happen again, in the future. They also believed that the dog star, had a certain mystical influence upon planet Earth, that was interpreted as supernatural when it was in conjunction with our sun during what was known as the Sothic, cycle. A cycle of 1461, 365 day years. This is the sole reason why the ancient Egyptians built the Great Pyramid at Giza. The Great Pyramid is a giant observatory, of which its principal purpose is to track the star Sirius. Throughout history, the secret knowledge involving the Black Dog Star, was kept by the hierophants of the mystery religions, encoded by etymology, and allegory. In today's largest secret society, the Freemasons, it is the most highly venerated object within their lodges amongst the higher degrees, and their architecture they have built in cities globally, reflects the esoteric symbolism identifying this dark star, and black sun. During World War II, and the Nazi uprising, the secret attaché of Adolf Hitler's Third Reich, were called the SS. To the recruits, it was called the Schutzstaffel, or Special Staff, Security Force. To the initiates of the Thule Society, it was called the Schwartz Zone, or Black Sun. In a secret cable that was read by a Swiss ambassador to Tokyo, the code for the secret atom bomb program of the Nazis, was called, Sirius. One of the most famous German esoterists behind the occult dogma of the Schwartz Zone, was Ara Schwaller de Lubitsch. To Lubitsch, the Black Sun was the cosmic system of atomic structure, whose nucleus was in the great provider called, Sothis. He stated the dog star was an extreme gravitational force emanating from the galactic center, and that Sothis, being called the soul of the dog star in antiquity, was also the soul of the German people emblazoned upon the national flag, the swastika. To the high echelon occultists within the Thule society like Lubitsch, the SS were the initials that stood for, Isis, and the first and last letters of the name, Sirius. Within the matrix of theism and mythos amongst all early primal civilizations, is the ground zero and point of origin, the Sirius star. The star plays the most vital and important role in occult wisdom throughout history, whose knowledge is the most tightly kept and secretive, that unlocks the syncretic web of all mysteries of occult and metaphysical sciences. The Black Rite of Memphis practiced by the secret elites of Egypt, revealed this esoteric secret, through initiation, into the Black, Dog, Sun.
sine wave permeates everything in the cosmos, including you and I at the subatomic level. Believed to be the very presence of deity throughout the creation by the ancients, this sine wave forms the base geometry of all that we can see in the material Good morning. universe. Good morning. Oh, and in case I don't see you, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Morning, Truman. Morning, Spencer. Oh, no, no, no. no. Oh, he won't break you. Get down. Yeah, I know. Named 
by the Sumerians, Nibiru. Pisces in esoteric symbology. This perihelion point in the orbits of the Sun, Sirius, is called First Time in the Golden Age in Primal Antiquity. It's also referred to as Hell in some mythic epos. The place where Time ends and begins again. Called the womb of Sothis, this astronomical position is serious. It's the birthplace of all mythos, theos, on planet Earth. As with all secret societies, you have levels, and, and if you're on the lower level, you don't even know they're upper level. You don't even, you don't even, they don't even tell you. You bump into it by accident, or someone comes along. Now, in Scottish Rite, that's something different, you know, because they know that there's a... But before then, in basically secret societies, let's just go, let's go to ancient Egypt. To the ancient Egyptians, the priest would tell the serfs, the guys that tilled the land, they would say, the sun is God, okay? And, and, and so the, they accepted that very um, low-level interpretation, all physical. That's not what the priest believed. What the priest believed, there was a second level. Um, the priest believed that, no, the physical sun is not the supreme being. It's the spirit which flows through the physical sun that is the supreme deity. However, there was another level. And the priest didn't even know it. It's those that were involved and, 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 and elevated to, to um, now if I would have told you this 15 years ago, I might have gotten shot. But this is now, I'm so glad now that this is easy to talk about. Uh, the, the third level, which was, the, which was a better, a higher level of understanding, said, no, it's not, that's not the sun. The sun is not the supreme deity. No, yes, spiritual energies come through the sun. That's not what we're talking about. What we're talking about is the star Sirius. The dog star, because the dog star was everything to the ancient Egyptians. suggesting that the entire foundation on which our notion of human history rests is faulty. The evidence is beginning to suggest to us that uh, a whole chapter is missing from the human story, that all the legends of a great lost civilization that haunt the myth memories of mankind may be true. One thing is for sure, there was an enormous horrendous cataclysm at the end of the last ice age and this brings us to that date of 10,500 BC that we focus on in the monuments. Something happened to the world at the end of the last ice age of sufficient magnitude to have wiped out a whole civilization and what we're arguing is that the traces of that lost civilization may be what confronts us at Giza. <laughs> 